Hello guys, this is Goodlike, and this is the series where I try to develop an application to replace the YouTube sub box. Wow, we got an intro, that's, that's new. So in this video I want to get started on writing stories, and probably finish as well, because how many could there really be? for this particular application. I'm not going too crazy with it. So what's the user story? I'm kind of not sure, actually. From my experience, user story just becomes very synonymous to a task. And I don't think that's what was intended. Usually when I read up about it or I see some examples, it's a kind of a vague description that makes sense when you read it. But not when you think about it. I mean, we can just take a look. Like, let's do user story. It's a tool. A capture description of a software feature from an end user perspective. Jesus Christ. That's a lot of terms. Let's try to pin it down a little bit, though. When it all comes down to it, user stories are about defining requirements in a particular way. So your application has some kind of requirements. Usually it's different kind of requirements, actually. Uh, you know, you need some security on that application. You need, you need the application to do something. You need it to look nice or whatever. Now, some of these requirements are never going to go into the user story because they are about the entire application. It's very unlikely that only one portion of your application should be secure, whereas everything else can be just whatever. Admittedly, if it is, you can probably write it as a user story, I would assume. No, no, no. User stories are about just some specific part of the application that some user can use to achieve some goal. The focus should be on the goal, not on a specific implementation. So to be fair, sometimes you just have to have a very specific implementation because that's the requirement. But uh, usually you can negotiate what exactly the solution will be. See, there's immediately a problem, though. It, it almost seems from such a definition that you can just do whatever the hell you want so long as it solves a problem. I would assume that the best place to draw that line, what you should look at in an abstract way and what you should already determine insofar as implementation, would be somewhere around where your expertise ends. As a programmer or developer or whatever, you are an expert. And everything that falls under the domain of your expertise should always be ultimately up to you. No one should come and tell you how to write a bloody Java class if you're a Java developer. That's your job and your responsibility. On the flip side, I don't think that you'll have any issues with someone coming and telling you exactly how a particular piece of the UI would look. Now, normally, stories are written against a project which has a team, so I would go as far as to say that that is probably the most logical place to draw the line. You take all the expertise of your team, and if they say, yeah, I'm an expert in this field, I know the best, then at no point should any user story attempt to order this particular team to develop a very particular solution. This is all conjecture, of course, uh, completely untested stuff. But it's worth tr trying out, right? So in my case, I am definitely an expert in development. I don't want to say databases, but uh, sure, SQL. I could, I could, I could write some nice SQL. When I say nice, I don't mean performant, but just nice looking. It's, it's great. And I completely suck 
at graphics design. In fact, I just straight up don't. You know how everyone was upset with YouTube's changes and how they remove colors and possibilities to change how your page looks? I don't give a shit. To me, the upsetting part was that they removed functionality. So when I will be writing stories, I will be focusing on obviously expressing goals and stuff, but I won't shy away from specifying very specific implementations of the visual aspect. Of course, this may seem silly. If I am writing the stories, whatever I specify is my own business, but uh, if you look at the agenda, we will look into comments as well, which may have, for example, demands that they want to have a specific button in a specific place. That's, I think that's perfectly reasonable, though of course uh, I may still debate it, but I'm not an expert, so I don't want to, in some sense, have that responsibility. This may sound a little bit dysfunctional. What kind of an application it would be if any random schmuck comes and tells the developer, I need a button here that does this thing? That that does sound extremely dysfunctional, and uh, I think the reason why uh, real projects never devolve into this is because, well, for one, usually every team does have some kind of a designer, you could say, or they have uh, guidelines that come from somewhere else. In my case, for example, at my work, if I ever have to touch the UI, I pretty much have to Lego it from random pieces that already exist and are pre-built. It's not as fun as it, I make it sound. It's just... It has to obviously match the design of the rest of the application, and uh, it's unlikely that the application I would be working with the UI of is an application that our team is entirely just using and no one else. However, in our case, I don't know design. You probably don't know design. So whatever's going to come out out of this is probably going to be disastrous. But it's as good as it's going to get. That's not to say that at some point my competences or my willingness to take responsibility will change. I think that sentence was not correct, but I think you get what I'm saying. I might change my mind and then we will uh, adjust. Part of Agile is adjustment after all, and this is exactly the kind of adjustment we're talking about here. Spring planning. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. You s I just noticed that I have spring planning. Just, just, wow, that's amazing. There we go, fixed. Jesus. Now let's be clear on something. User story isn't just the first sentence in it. It's the whole deal, the whole package. Usually user stories have acceptance criteria. So even if I write the initial statement in a relatively vague way, the acceptance criteria might be where all the uh, nitty-gritty details, such as placement of buttons, will be. I mean, ultimately, as you write such stories that are too specific, you would hope that one day your team would be able to handle it, even without the specificus. Specificus? Is that like a Roman general? Enough talk about shenanigans regarding user stories. Why don't we actually find a tool where we can write some and then maybe things will become more clear to you and me both? <laughs> well, why a tool, first of all? The answer is rather simple. I ain't got no blackboard. And I ain't sacrificing pieces of paper when there's perfectly fine computer hard drives that aren't even my own to wear and tear. 
for free no less. I mean, I could probably afford some super cheap plan, but if I can get it for free, why wouldn't I? Other than that, we obviously need some place where I can put information such as this. There is no way in hell I'm gonna keep it in my mind. Like, even right now, I have no idea what I'm gonna do for the story time. I'll just figure it out when we get there. So, that would be hopeless. And if I am going to write it down somewhere, somehow, it may as well be a way that someone else can see. And if someone else is going to see it, we might as well do it in a way that they also have some chance of recognizing and understanding easier than not. I mean, this is a YouTube series, after all, it only makes sense to have all the resources available from the start for you to peruse. So, what do we got? We've got some suggestions, so let's start with these. Hopefully that's gonna be enough, and we'll find a solution. So the first one is Jira. So it's a software by Atlassian, as I mentioned in the last episode. Uh, they also... Uh, do Bitbucket, and Bitbucket definitely is free, though it's obviously limited as any free thing goes. So you can try it for free. And for some reason, when I try it for free, they give me the bucks amounts. How dare you, Jira Software? How dare you? Try our products in the cloud free for three days. It would be a software that's on the cloud, and that's why you have to pay dollars a month for it, you know? Who needs applications that you pay once and then install and you're done? To be fair, they're also being developed as we go along, so there's that. But you could just buy different versions. I'm just not a fan of subscription fees for a fucking program that, you know, I could install and just have it running all the time without problems. Did you know IntelliJ Idea tried to pull that shit? Technically, they did. You kind of have to pay every month, sorry, every well, a month or a year, but at least you get to keep the version of the year prior. Here's something to tell you guys. If at any point of time you look at what you've done and you realize that it's super complicated ass shit, throw it away, do it simpler. It fucking sucks. So that fucking plan, it fucking sucks. Whatever. Anyway, I, I ain't paying 10 months, 10 months, $10 a month, even if we, I don't know, it, it would, I would probably just pay for it until we're done, but that could take months and that means tens of dollars doesn't make sense. Let's try something else. Jira versus Trello. Well, that's a, that's, that's perfect. Project management tools. How dare you? User snap. No. Nope. There was a really nice table, and now I have to scroll until we find it. There we go. It's on premise. Cloud host. So you can have Jira on premise. Why would you pay a subscription fee at that point, though? I guess they just don't include that in the pricing, because they don't... No one's just going to do that. Look at that. Basic plan for one user. $10 one-time pay. What? What kind of madness is this? Is this, like, outdated? I don't believe you. All right, Trello. Let's look into Trello. What the hell is this? Yeah, this looks like it's, a. Uh, far more advanced tool, and, uh, I don't need that. It sounds like a terrible idea. Sign up. It's free. It's also by Atlassian. God damn it, Atlassian. How would it, why would they create a tool that competes with their own other tool? It's clearly not intended for this particular purpose. Let's 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 put it away. Put it away. Easy backlog makes agencies agile. Oh dear. As a scrum master, I want to manage backlogs and sprints so I can implement agile effectively. Whoa, dude, that's so on the nose. The sad story is, of course, that 
you could legitimately see something like this in a backlog, except it's an actual task that someone wants you to complete. <sighs> let's not let's not go into the abyss right now. What the fuck? Yeah, it's easy backlog, copyrighted by itself. Join now, for free. It's faster than Excel. Whoa. Someone who's not very proficient in English is gonna come look at this and say, Oh, that's how you write stories. And then, and then, it's over. They're gonna write stories like this. They're not gonna understand. You made a funny, but you've doomed some arbitrary company to a lack of excellence. It's, it doesn't get any better. It, let's just sign up. I can't. This is a tool to... Look, I get it. That That's why they did it. It's so that people, when they come into the website, they would be like, holy shit, I can't watch this. It's breaking my soul. I like it. Stop. Okay, little known fact. I made an email for this game for some reason, and then I never look at it. It's a perfect opportunity to actually do it. I didn't enable scripts. There's no way this fucking shit will complete if I don't have scripts enabled. Your new account has been created for you. I must log in now. Example corporate website backlog. Holy shit. In less than three minutes, we will walk you through some of the key features of Easy Backlog. Click next. Highly recommend it for new users. To proceed or close if you don't want to view the walkthrough. Very well, we shall proceed. Themes. All stories are categorized into themes. Each theme is automatically assigned a theme code. Shown below as hop, which is used to prefix each story's ID within that theme. Yeah, but what the hell is a theme? I mean, what is intended to be, rather? I mean, you say homepage or the indication. This is weird. Why would you even have more than one theme? I can understand the idea of, like, categorizing stories. I don't understand what theme has to do with it. Okay, let's move on. Okay, that's it. We have three minutes, guys. We've done it. Statistics. This is the burndown chart. Okay, I know this one. That's not a burndown chart. Well, I guess it's a burndown chart for the entire project, but that's not what the burndown chart is supposed to be for. I have no idea what burn up is. I guess it's like the opposite of burn down. Ignore what I just said and just understand it magically. Velocity. Look, these aren't important. Sprint. Four, three, two, one. You know, I kind of like this. It's rather simple. It's not complicated. Uh, let's create new sp Oh, shit. See, now that's going to be complicated. It's actually using durations and working days. That's not what I want to do. That's fine. <laughs> we will desecrate this website. We will change our <laughs> sprint in whatever. We decide if we want a longer sprint in time and we'll do it. God damn it. I suppose these could be like epics in Jira, right? That could work. I'm not going to have anything as uh, ridiculously complicated as that, so... Create a new backlog. Name of backlog. I christened the backlog to be named thusly. YouTube... YouTube... Subscription box. Whatever, that's good enough, right? No, do we need replacement as well? Just to be clear. Is this backlog for a client or a company other than yours? The Good Life 13, which is now apparently a company. Okay. 
Yeah, I like the Eurish, Eurish European stuff. Would you like to have the mandates for each story and theme automatically calculated? No thanks. <clears throat> Use the 5090 estimation method. If you're not sure what that is, leave this unchecked. I, in fact, do not know what that is, so I will leave this unchecked. Fibonacci numbers. Strict Fibonacci. Let's, let's just do anything. I, I don't think, I don't think that makes sense. It's a funny thing, but it's not a good one. Create new backlog. Wow, we so okay. We have this. This this is just sample. It's kind of similar, actually, to the example. Let's add a theme. So if I add a story as a test theme, as a test story, I want to exist in the backlog so that I can be moved to any theme. Oh shit. How do I delete this? God, this is... This is dangerous. We're playing with fire here. Just one wrong button click. And yet are done. Alright, so let's say I create another theme. This... This... Theme. This complete nonsense. Let's add a story. Well, no, actually, I don't want it. I want to move this to here. Can't do it. For some reason. Move it. Oh, shit, you can't do it. Why can I not move it like this, but I can move it with a convoluted... You know what? Doesn't matter. I can do it, that's all that matters. <laughs> Core backlog. With a capital B. That still has code TET. I think not. SBC. That's not... This is CBC, not SBC. Listen. It's fine. So I, I don't see any reason to use themes. It seems ridiculous. I think you just want one backlog. Now, to be fair, in some cases, I, you could suggest we can always add another theme and call it uh, technical bullshit tasks. And here we will have technical bullshit tasks. We hopefully won't have anything like that at all. But, you know, if, if I see... You see, here's the issue. Okay, so let's say we do that. How do I prioritize? Which one is more important? The, the technical bullshit tasks or something in core backlog? So I think the idea here is that if we put anything in here, we, we just put it because we have to, not because we want to. This is like we come to a situation where we just need to write something down. We can't fix it. Time's running out. I know I'm not going to finish it. and I need to write it down for some reason. Put it here and then later you can either evolve into a story or whatever. Just, just, just stuff that we don't really care about, which is why it's called bullshit. It doesn't even have capital B bullshit. That's how little we care about it. Well, that was productive. All right. Let's start off by writing down some stories. Unfortunately, there's no, like, place here to do this. Like, there's no, like, notes. Why can't I just have a notes? Do I need another team called notes? And then I create a story that's actually not a story. And I just write notes in the criteria. Not. Oh dear. As a series of notes. I wanted to make a joke about a series of tubes. But I just can't think of a good way to do it. So we'll just stop there. Let's see how many criteria can we have. Surely they will stop when the alphabet runs out. No! Those bastards outthought me. They're pretty fucking good at this. Okay. First things first. Let's think of some requirements. What, what do we want? You know, things that we want in terms of requirements. 
These requirements may not necessarily be expressed in terms of usability. We're not writing user stories here. We're writing down requirements. That's different. So let's do that. This is, this is the part I've been not waiting for. Obviously, first requirement is C. Subscriptions. Interesting wording, of course, because we don't really want to see subscriptions. So, well, we do want to see subscriptions at some point in time, but that's neither here nor there. In, in terms, we really just want to see set of videos from a bunch of channels, playlists, or whatever else in one place. So that would be more accurate. See videos from various sources in one place. Right, so that makes a lot more sense. Maybe it doesn't actually for you, but it, to me, it does for one and for two. This is more what I mean. It's going to be a bunch of places with videos. We want to see them all in one place. We don't want to go there, 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 there. That's the whole point of a subscription box. Now, for the sake of argument, we should also see videos from a specific source. If you can't see videos from a specific source, you won't be able to tell if you want that source or not. So, for example, you look up some channel, just because you, like, typed it into a search doesn't mean you found it. You still have to go into the channel, see that this is the right channel or playlist, and then you have to still confirm, do I really care enough now that I see? Instead of C, we could say aggregate videos from various sources. And now we can state control the sources which to aggregate. Beautiful. Obviously, there would be really no point in seeing a bunch of videos if you couldn't actually decide what sources you look at them from. That just makes no sense. Let's review our top level architecture. So what what else do we want this to do? Um, we want to explicitly, I suppose, mention YouTube here because this is a requirement. Get information from YouTube. We want to store settings. Once again, it would be really silly if we, you know, have to redo everything every single time. So store settings. Things for just settings for now. Let's not go into detail. And also the other thing that we want to store is store interactions. So this would be from this side. When we do have a UI, we want to make sure that whatever interactions that we make, that they don't disappear if you just turn off the application and then turn it on. So see a list of videos from a specific source, but what about see information about specific videos? Yeah, there we go. Hmm, we want this aspect. So we want keep application up to date with a background process. Right. Obviously, since it's a subscription box, we could just pull it once and then leave it at that. And then you'll have to manually refresh, which could be also because we can't guarantee that it will be always up to date. There will be some kind of a period which we can't exceed. Otherwise, we'll just be spamming YouTube and they won't like that and they'll shut it down. So let's not do that. Instead, we have an option to manually refresh the application data, but we also will keep up to date with the background process. I haven't really thought any more about whether I want to hard limit uh, the videos to some arbitrary uh, time frame, or am I fine with keeping a complete list of all times and then scroll down as we need? So, but let's say that at some point, because again, this isn't necessarily the initial requirements, this could be requirements at any point that may or may not make it to the product. So at some point we do want that. You could choose, for example, I never want to see videos from older than seven weeks at all, you'll never see them. 
or you could limit it by scrolling. The reason you would want to have the setting of uh, a hard setting is that it will likely improve performance because then we can just just throw away all the other videos and not keep them in the memory and not worry about them at all and if you for example remove a bunch of videos we don't need to suddenly load a bunch more which probably would be removed as well already if you keep removing videos yeah there's just a lot of background processes that won't really do anything that will probably be helped by having a hard limit but we'll see we'll see like ability to filter by watch streamed and perhaps length okay so this relates to the specificness uh filter videos based on their properties given some property we will allow you to filter videos from view very explicitly from view they won't disappear, you know, you won't delete the videos on YouTube or anything like that. Okay, what else do we have? Um, right, the buckle suggested mostly something about not removing things automatically and hiding, etc. But I think that this is covered by filtering. Essentially, you will have a uh, possibility to filter out videos you've seen. So if you always keep that filter on, they will automatically disappear as they open up. And if you don't, then they won't. And I think that makes perfect sense. In regards to subscribing to playlists, uh, in this case, and that's part of the various sources. And the reason I do more than just channels and playlists is because of the filtering. I think that it makes more sense to not necessarily just rely on the playlist system because it relies on the person who's making and managing the playlist to make all the changes. I'm pretty good at that, but some people aren't quite as good. They will forget to add videos and you know, it could be problematic. At the same time, though, we don't want the alternative to be let's subscribe to the whole channel and then have some complex filtering there. So instead, we could have filtering on the actual playlists that you subscribe to. So you take a channel and you just filter out their stuff. Let's say you say, I don't want to see this, 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 based on, let's say, the title or something. And then there you have it. It's not perfect, but I think it's better yet than just having playlists and channels. And this was just about a suggestion about our uh, applications, which we have already considered. So, okay, I think that's it now. I think we've got all the basic requirements in a very basic level of this application. We might be able to write some stories now. I'll add one more, actually. Import subscriptions from YouTube. All right, so getting information from YouTube is going to be more of a general requirement that will permeate all the stories. Instead, let's uh, go ahead and see here. Aggregate videos from various sources. That's a little bit tough. Let's not start there. I'm not confident. I see a list of videos from a specific source. So this one's pretty easy, right? And I'm already stumbling on the first place. So I didn't cover this, but we need to kind of decide who are going to be our users. Because every application has some kind of users. And it's kind of dumb to just call them user. That's very nondescript. And it will be confusing if we try to export this somewhere else. So I'm wondering what could work. You, you can't really say YouTuber. Because that's more like someone who creates YouTube videos rather than watches. Let's Google it, actually. Especially if they spend a lot of time perfection. Your top as viewers, the audience, video vampires, subscribers. Ooh, subscriber. This fits perfectly with our theme because we're basically we're doing this for people who subscribe to something. And it's, and the watching isn't the big aspect. It's not like our application is necessarily supposed to make us watch and stuff. But you know what I'm, you know what I mean. You know what, you know what I mean.
as a subscriber. Oh man, that's that's brilliant. I want to see a list of videos in a playlist so I can choose if I want to subscribe to the playlist or not. I believe this covers pretty much every source because technically the list of videos that someone uploads is also treated as a playlist on YouTube's side. I don't know if that was the case all the time. In fact, I'm pretty sure it wasn't necessarily because playlists were limited to 200. But today, they're definitely the same thing. See a list of channels for a search criteria so that I can find the channels I want to subscribe to. We want to have the functionality that you can search for a channel by name, for example, or whatever, or some other tag, and then you could subscribe to them after reviewing their videos in the playlist. Now, of course, if I only implement this particular user story, but I don't implement this, you won't be able to do that. You'll have to just guess by their name. <laughs> That doesn't matter, it's still, it's still better than nothing, right? You can do it separately, accomplish it separately, and later when you put them together, it's going to be like, like a real application. That's a good sign we're onto something. But I do believe that in this case, we can also do a very similar story for playlists. Unlike with the videos in the playlist, searching for a channel or searching for a playlist is different, so I see the merit of separating the two into separate user stories. Now you could say, let's just implement search, but I'm not sure. Do we need video search, etc.? I don't want to overdo it with functionality that we don't really need. And in this case, I don't think we need a full-fledged search functionality. I think just having the ability to search for a channel or for a playlist will suffice. Because, like, once again, we're not replacing the entirety of YouTube. And as a result, if you really want to search for a f fucking video, just search on it for YouTube. And you'll, it's not like you're going to get significantly different results here. Right? It's going to be more or less the same shit. Even just having this would probably be suffice, because how often are you going to subscribe to playlists? You'll know the playlist name. You'll be able to find it. If I just fucking in, put this. Let's play Dark Souls. Right? How many such playlists are there in existence? It's just, there's no way you're going to find the right one. But that's in general case, whereas in some cases, you could probably find, like, let's say, let's code... You know, if, if you know, oh, let's code Tetris. Okay, let's code Tetris. Right? It doesn't even have to be a playlist, but for the playlist, it's definitely the first one. I want to see information about the video. Decide if I want to watch it or not. Somewhere in our application, we obviously want to see information about a video. I mean, in this graph, the information about a video would be this. Now, I'll be honest, in the initial version of the application, maybe like after the first sprint, we probably won't have the UI at all. We'll just have a kind of a command line application or something. And... uh this will come in time. Because I, I think that makes more sense than trying to uh, already cram it into UI, especially since UI is supposed to be separate. So we really should be able to just make this work, this whole thing, without this. So it almost doesn't make sense to do it all at once. I want to import my subscriptions so I can avoid having to set them up manually. A lot of these are going to be like really blatant and obvious, but that's kind of the point. For someone who is a YouTube subscriber, 
these stories should be blatantly obvious as to why they exist and what they mean. It would be ridiculous to make them any other way. Insofar, you could say that you sometimes, when you write a story, you don't even need certain portions of it. Like, you don't need the this part. If everyone knows, there's really no point in specifying these. But, but, it's still a good idea. Because you never know when someone new comes to the team or something, and they maybe don't know necessarily everything w about what it means to be a subscriber. In the case of YouTube, obviously, it's very simple in the first place, so uh, probably anyone will understand most of these terms, and that should be generally the case as well. But if you're doing something more complicated or working with a specific application that does weird things, this could be a lot more in-depth than you think. As a subscriber, I want to hide certain videos from few so that I can focus on the videos I choose not to hide. Ta-da! See videos up to a certain date. Very similar to this, right? You know, hiding and seeing only certain videos. So in this case would be uh, certain videos from, first of all, subscription box. I want to hide videos from subscription box based on the information. Let's just go for scrolling, right? And we can add that later if it's necessary. See more and more videos in the subscription box as I scroll down. So I can see videos where in my subscription box some time ago. That was more or less what the requirement from the comment was, so. Someone wants this, someone wants to see old stuff, so. Who am I to deny them this? Manually refresh application data. Okay, as a subscriber. I want to refresh my subscription box so I can see recently appeared, see videos that have recently appeared. And in the same line, I want to see relatively recently see videos that have relatively recently appeared in my subscription box. My subscription box to contain videos that have relatively recently appeared. So I can avoid... It's a little bit unclear, and you could say that these are very similar, but ultimately they will be different and solve different problems. This one is more about just automatic ref refresh in this one about manual, which is different. To keep videos hidden based on my interactions, I want to mark videos as hidden as hidden or watched so I can keep them out of sight. Excellent. And I also, as a subscriber, I want to keep videos I've marked, keep marks on videos, keep persistent marks on videos, so I can keep them out of sight when I relaunch the application. There we go. Keep my subscription box settings so that I can avoid having to input them every time I launch 
the application. Simple stuff, really. Choose which playlists appear on my subscription box. See videos from them aggregated in one place. Well, I'll be damned. It looks like we have what we seek. Right, so this is the initial backlog. Not a lot of stories. There's a good chance that we will, as we estimate them and realize that some of them might be a little bit too big, you know, we might split them. I don't know if that makes sense. We already kind of split this one into two, technically. And, uh, of course, in the future videos, we need to prioritize them, decide how long we'll do this, etc., etc., etc. But I think this is a good start. I don't think we're going to do much better live. I will probably review this a couple of times during the coming days and see if I can make some changes. I won't make them. I'll just write them down somewhere and I'll make them live when we start the next video and then we'll do the rest of the stuff. Obviously, if you have any ideas or you have anything else you would want the subscription boss replacement to do, now is your time to shine. Go crazy. Um, I'll see if I can make this public, and if I can, I will put in the description. If I can't, then I will not put in the description and explain in the description why I couldn't make it public. That's it for the normal part today. We're removing the estimations to video six because it's just it's, it would take too long. Otherwise, this video is already too long. But there's still enough time to uh, ramble about the backlog refinement. So, one aspect that I noticed strangely enough, is that Scrum doesn't actually prescribe backlog refinement, which you may find unbelievable. And let's see. Here's a search for backlog refinement Scrum, and Scrum Alliance, and Scrum Incorporated, and pretty much everyone else says, yeah, this, this is a real thing. I don't know what the fuck happened to Scrum Alliance. <laughs> Scripts must have been turned off. Here's uh, apparently a talk about how to do it. It says it'll take five minutes, even though it's two. Yeah, this is this is these these are very simplified stories. I would say we, we've we've definitely put a lot more than that into the our list of stories, and I'll see again. I will review it and see if I can come up with something better on the spot. But yeah, I found it really strange that it wasn't on the website. You could probably find it if you really searched it too. So, from my experience, backlog refinement is a little bit. Meh. But I think it mostly has to do with the fact that the stories, stories that I have uh, been working with haven't been real stories. This, this is some high quality shit compared to what I have to work with. I've written better than these myself, but that's about it. The way I understand it, the intent of the backlog refinement is kind of to go through stories and just claim, okay, well, Imagine that this was one story, just I want to search for shit. And obviously, like, you can search for different things, and maybe implementing some of them would be easier, especially if you consider things like UI and etc. And then you could split into two. And you could even write subtasks. Uh, this doesn't seem to support subtasks. Like, everything is a story at best. Who needs them? Who fucking needs them anyway? We'll do this with just stories and technical bullshit tasks. Who needs anything else? So, already a part of the refinement is kind of thrown out the window. <laughs> I didn't expect that to be the case, honestly. It's just, it's just something I just noted on right now. Since there is like a huge chunks of time between episodes, and I will be thinking about this at least some, and I'll be reviewing it before videos or whatever. To, you know, just looking at it, reading it out loud, thinking it sounds stupid and rewriting it, things like that. It makes no sense to have an explicit meeting where I would do that. It would probably be useful if there were a lot of people responsible for a lot of different parts of the application, or... I wouldn't be as knowledgeable about everything, 
But uh, in this case, I have the full knowledge. And like I said, if I do something, I'll make sure to do it on video. Ultimately, you can probably just straight up roll the backlog refinement into sprint planning. It's just that doing it that way may be a little bit... Well, for one, it would take a little bit extra time, which would take too long for most people. And also, the another issue would be that as you come up against some kind of a problem or something that cannot be answered on the spot, it's going to be shit out of luck. So you would have to put away anything that you can't like immediately understand out of the way. You'd also have to involve people like, I don't know, business analysts, if you have those immediately in your sprint planning. And I think at the intent of the sprint planning is that it's right before a sprint, so everything that you make a decision on, it's not done and done, but it's done and done unless there's a good reason. Whereas on a backlog refinement, if you don't do it at the same time, you could still say, well, we could still take the stories. We just need to clarify a few things here and there, which wouldn't be possible to do if you combine the two meetings. But again, whether you even need it in the first place is a questionable, like I said, in our case, it seems definitely optional. But I did find it funny that it's just not included, even though it's usually it's pretty meh. It'll be a good argument. Why do we have this boring meeting? Scrum.org says no such meeting exists. Who do you believe? Yourself, who only had like, what, a year of Agile experience? Or a website done by people who've probably spent their whole life researching the subject? Eh? Appeal to authority and all, but maybe it'll work, who knows? Alright, well that's that for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you laters.